ready? Good evening. I'd like to call the meeting to order, please. Would you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Councilor Clements? Present. Councilor Langevin? Present. Councilor Marcucci? Present. Councilor McDonald? Present. Councilor Moriarty? Present. Councilor Nicola? Present. Councilor Pelequin? Okay. Councilor Regis? Present. Councilor Vandal? Present. Eight present? Thank you. Three, consider and accept the Council Reorganization Minutes of Monday, July 9th, 2012. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Corrections? Okay, we have a roll call on that, please. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? <coughs> Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Moriarty? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Eight yes. Thank you. Consider and accept the council minutes of Monday, July, the council minutes of Monday, July 9th, 2012. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Okay. Please um, show the record that Councillor Pelequin is here. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. No discussion. Can I have a roll call, please, on Agenda 4? Councillor Mikoji? Yes. Councillor McDonald? Yes. Councillor Moriarty? Yes. Councillor Nicola? Yes. Councillor Pelequin? Yes. Councillor Regis? Yes. Councillor Vandal? Yes. Councillor Clements? Yes. Councillor Langevin? Yes. Nine yes? Thank you. There are some seats down here in the front if people would like to sit. I recommend that you do so. Okay. Agenda item number five, subcommittee reports a general government. Um, prior to even discussing the uh, subcommittee reports, I'm going to announce the subcommittees. The councillors have all received this already, but for everybody else, General Government Chair Pamela Regis, Councillors David Langevin and Amelia Pelequin will be on that committee. Department of Public Works, the Chair will be Councillor Conrad Vandal with Councillors Darlene Marcucci and Amelia Pelequin as members of that subcommittee. Protection of Persons and Property. Um, the chair uh, is Councillor David Langevin with Councillors Pamela Regis and um, Larry McDonald as members of that subcommittee. Education and Human Services, Councillor Darlene Marcucci is the chair, Sean Moriarty and Denise Clements are on that subcommittee. <coughs> Planning and Development, Councillor Denise Clements is the chair and Councillors Sean Moriarty and Larry McDonald are on that subcommittee. As of tomorrow, that is the last day that, that any citizen members that were on the previous subcommittees would be considered members of those subcommittees. If anybody is interested in joining or becoming a part of any of these subcommittees, you will have to, whether you've been on them or not in the past, you do have to go to the town hall and pick up a letter, um, fill it out, and you can drop it off there, and we will get it to the correct subcommittees. Um, and now I will go into subcommittee reports. A, general government is Councillor Regis. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, no report and no meeting scheduled at this time. Thank you. B, DPW, Councillor Vandal. Thank you. A meeting of the DPW subcommittee was held on Wednesday, July 25th, 2012, in the Rice Conference Room. In attendance were myself, subcommittee members, Councillor Marcucci, and Councillor Pelequin. Also in attendance were <coughs> Councilor Regis, Town Manager Clark, and DPW Director Tom Daly. I call the meeting to order at 7 p.m. Item, agenda item number seven, discuss and vote to accept amendment number five for continued wastewater treatment facilities and operation and maintenance services beginning August 1st, 2012 through July 31st, 2012. In accordance with the terms of the amendment agreement attached, 
Mr. Clark gave an overview of the subject matter, stating, Viola approached him to extend the contract. Viola has been with the town for over 10 years, and Mr. Clark and Mr. Daly would like to extend the contract for an additional three years to see us through the current ongoing water protection control permit issues through EPA. The contract calls for 1% increase in year one and between 2 to 5% increase in years two and three. The contract also allows for a revenue sharing component of compost sales and takes into account the new middle high school pump station at no additional cost to the town. Council Pelican question item five of the contract, which states blended escalator of 40% CPI-U Boston and 60% CPI water, sewer, and trash in Dices. But a letter from Viola states, Mr. Clark said he would check into this but believes it was an error in the agreement and should be the 65% CPI U Boston and 35% CPI water, sewer and trash indices. A motion was made by Council Marcucci and seconded by Council Pelequin with a favorable recommendation to Council to ratify Amendment 5 to the agreement with Viola for continued wastewater treatment facilities and operations and maintenance services beginning August 1st, 2012 through July 31st, 2015. Vote by show of hands, all in favor, three to zero. A motion to adjourn was made by Council Marcucci and seconded by Council Pelequin. Vote by show of hands, all in favor, three to zero. Meeting adjourned at 7.25 p.m. Respectfully submitted, Evelyn Rivera, recording clerk. That's all I have, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you. Agenda item uh, 5C is Education and Human Services, and that would be Councilor Marcucci. Thank you, Madam Chair. The meeting of the EHS subcommittee was held on Tuesday, July 24th in the Rice Conference Room. In attendance were Chairwoman Marcucci, Councilors Moriarty, and Councilor that, Clemp. Um, me. No. That was me. <laughs> and, uh, Councilor Nicola. Yeah. Also in attendance were Councilors Regis, Councilor Langevin, Town Manager Clark, Michael Trombley, and Councilor Clemens was excused. Called the meeting to order at 6.30. Agenda item number one, discuss and vote to approve change order number eight between the town of Southbridge and Consigli Construction for a no cost change order for the rendering of an extension of substantial completion for the middle high school. Mr. Clark stated we are coming to the end of the project. It should be completed on July 30th, 2012 and the building turned over to the town on August 7th. The grounds will be turned over to the town as they are completed. A motion was made by Councilor Nicola, second by Councilor Moriarty, with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve change order number eight between the Town of Southbridge and Consigli for a no-cost change order for the rendering of an extension of substantial completion for the middle high school project. Vote by a show of hands, all in favor. Agenda item number two, discuss and vote to approve change order number nine between <coughs> the Town of Southbridge and Consigli Construction in the amount of $19,291 as described in memo attached and dated 7-16-12. Mr. Clark said this is for continued work being done. A motion was made by Councilor Moriarty, second by Councilor Nicola, with a favorable recommendation to Council to approve change order number nine between the Town of Southbridge and Consigli Construction in the amount of $19,291 as described in the memo attached and dated 7-16-12. Vote by a show of hands. All in favor. Agenda item number three, vote to authorize the school business manager to enter into contracts for purchase of equipment related to the media center and media classroom for the middle high school in the amount of $120,000. Said funding to come from two sources. One, school technology budget up to $60,000, and two, cable committee capital fund in the amount of $60,000 said amount also being approved by the cable committee. Mr. Clark stated that this is the final budgeting from the school budget. Councilor Nicole clarified that the media center is actually the library and the media classroom is actually the studio. A motion was made by Councilor Nicola, second by Councilor Moriarty with a favorable recommendation to council to authorize the school business manager to enter into contracts for the purchase of equipment related to the media center and the media classroom for the middle high school in the amount of $120,000 said funding to come from two sources. 
I had already stated that earlier. Vote by show of hands, all in favor. Agenda item number four, discuss and vote to approve the agreement between Jennifer Reynolds <coughs> and the town of Southbridge for aerobic classes for citizens age 60 at the community center, 144 classes over the course of one year in the amount of $6,000, payable in 48 weekly payments of $125. <coughs> Mr. Trombley said the funding for these classes come from the Executive Office of Elder Affairs and the rates have not changed for a number of years. That's uh, probably about 10 years she has not gone up in any of her fees. There are 25 to 42 participants per class. A motion was made by Councilor Nicola, seconded by Councilor Moriarty, to approve the agreement between Jennifer Reynolds and the Town of Southbridge for aerobic classes for citizens age 60 at the community center. All in favor? Uh, I don't have, okay, there it is. Uh, that's about it. Okay. All in favor, a motion to adjourn was made by Councilor Moriarty, seconded by Councilor Nicola. Vote by a show of hands. All in favor. Uh, respectfully submitted, Evelyn Rivera. Thank you. Okay. Agenda um, D is planning and development. That would be Councilor Clements. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we do have not had a meeting yet, and there's nothing scheduled at this moment. But again, just echoing your words, <coughs> if anyone is interested in being on the uh, Planning and Development Subcommittee, we ask that you get that letter of interest over to the Town Manager's Office, and we'll schedule a meeting to get uh, you on board. Thank you. Thank you, Council. E, prot Protection of Persons and Property, Council Landman. Thank you, Madam Chair. A meeting of the Protection of Person Property Subcommittee meeting was held on Tuesday, July 24th at 2012 in the Rice Conference Room. In attendance were Chairman Langevin, Councilor Regis, Councilor Nicola. Also in attendance was Councilor Marcucci, Councilor Moriarty, Councilor Pelquin, Town Manager Clark, Police Chief Charette, Lieutenant Woodson, Dick Chesler, mm -hmm. Attorney John Carey, Councilor McDonald was excused. Chairman Langevin called the meeting to order at 7.30. Agenda item number one, vote to enter an executive session according to Mass General Law, Chapter 39, Section 23B, discuss strategies related to conducted uh, collective bargaining and litigation and vote to adjourn. A motion was made by Council Nicola, second by Council Regis, to enter an executive session at 7.30. Vote by roll call, all in favor, six to zero and to back into open session at 10 25 p.m. A motion to adjourn was made by Council Regis, second by Council Nicola. Mm -hmm. Vote by show of hands, all in favor, three uh, zero. Meeting adjourned at 10 25, respectfully submitted. Evelyn, Evelyn Rivera, recording clerk. Um, I do have no meeting scheduled at this time and um, Yes, we are looking for citizens, med members to participate. So anyone interested, please submit your letter of intention to the town manager's office. And that's all I have at this point. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, Councillor. Okay. Um, moving along to agenda item number six, Chairwoman's announcements. Um, the only announce, well, I have two. One, um, after our last meeting, there was a citizen who approached uh, Citizens Forum and suggested that we consider um, naming one of the rooms in the town hall after the late George Parent. And I just wanted to let you know that we are in the process of doing that. There is a plaque that's being um, made up, a portrait, and it will be and a portrait, and it will be meeting room two downstairs, the former um, retirement board room will become the George Parent Room. And as soon as that all happens, we will announce that. Secondly, I wanted to um, throw this out to the council members. I have for a long time wanted the council to go on a ride along uh, with DPW and see the various facilities in Southbridge we vote on a lot of things up here. It's important that we know what we're, it's nice to be able to see what you're, what you're voting on. So we're going to set something up so that all of the counselors can be taken on a tour. I know some of you know quite a bit of what's going on in town, but 
but there are new things that maybe not everybody is aware of, so we'll be, we will be doing that. Um, I'm also interested in a tour of the middle high school for all of the members of the council to have an opportunity to see it. I was up there again this past Thursday where the manager was conducting a tour for some of the members of the town hall, and every time I see it, it's closer and closer to being completed. It's absolutely fantastic. Of course, I don't know what I got on the bottom of my car when I went on the fields, but who do I sue? I just need to know. Who do I sue? No one. No? Okay. <laughs> All right. Because um, I can't get it off, whatever it is. Um, but that. And so that we're going to do that also, have a tour of the middle high, and middle high school facility, uh, a ride around with the DPW, and I also want to have another meeting like we did last year where the council can, can sit and discuss goals and objectives for this year um, and uh, I again I'm looking for dates so if you guys could kind of look at your calendars see what's open for the next you know month or two on a Saturday um, I don't want to do it all at once that's an awful lot to put on anybody so we kind of break it up into three different times and with that I'm going to move on to town managers announced oh one last thing I would be remiss Last week I had an opportunity to go up to the community center and take a look at the brand new windows that are in that facility. Um, this is a project that was undertaken by one of our counselors who went out and did what she needed to do. I commend Counselor Clements for an absolutely wonderful job. I know she didn't, she didn't do all of the physical work herself, but she certainly put this thing together and coordinated it and got the money and the funding from a lot of generous people in our community who worked very well with the town. And um, I just wanted to thank you and commend you on your hard work. It's beautiful, it's great, and it's gonna be wonderful for everybody, especially this year when uh, it gets cold, it won't be cold in the community center because we have nice new windows and it looks great. So with that, I'd like to move on to town manager's announcements. Mr. Clark. Thank you, Madam Chair. I do have uh, several this evening, and what I'll do is just kind of work my way through. On uh, We did an RFP for uh, 80 Marcy Street, the former, now former, uh, middle school here in the community. Uh, there were no takers on that, which probably isn't too much of a surprise to folks, but we will uh, continue to endeavor to, uh, to market that building uh, to the best of our ability. On the next one, I have, uh, we received a donation from Tractor Supply, uh, the assistant manager, a gentleman by the name of Tim Langevin, uh, for a recent donation to the Town of Southbridge Department of Public Works, uh, grateful for six large boxes of various spray and brush on paints. We have used uh, many of them for specific paints and primers uh, in the donation, so the DPW will uh, be able to reutilize some of this paint that was donated to it for various projects in the community. The next one uh, on the RFP related to Commercial Drive, uh, we had advertised uh, 10 acres of property. Uh, we did receive a bid on four acres and that is currently being processed and at this point uh, it looks favorable. The next item I have is that we did receive, uh, administration received and the council received a letter from, of concern from the police union. I just wish to say that I do acknowledge receipt of the letter. Uh, the letter was made public by the police union. Uh, so we did, administration and the police chief did publicly respond to those um, points that were highlighted in the letter. I have also gone uh, and personally toured the facility, looked at the various items, and I'm convinced that the matter is something that's more related to um, questions in the collective bargaining process, which has not gone altogether that smoothly. I have the utmost confidence in the chief. We have already had a additional negotiation session uh, with the union that I thought was productive and that we will continue the process from my perspective, I think that this is a, um, an issue uh, that doesn't need any additional attention. It's been adequately addressed, and I believe that to conclude addressing that issue should be best handled in the collective bargaining process. 
And then the last item that I have, uh, Madam Chair, is also <coughs> an item note related to the police department. There yeah, we are holding uh, the police sergeant's exam and the chief, uh, we are doing this with an outside consultant that the town had voted previously, Public Safety Consultants, LLC of Shrewsbury. And the examinations will be held on August 7th and 8th. And if members of the council wish to strictly observe, because I may go and observe myself, portions of that assessment center, uh, you're more than welcome to do that. Uh, specific dates, uh, specific times on those dates will be determined and we will make that information available as it becomes available to the, to the uh, office. That concludes my comments this evening, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Okay, moving right along to agenda number eight, which is um, set aside for swearing in and presentations. This evening, we have two. The first on the agenda, um, Fastenal, um, is a new business, and that one has been postponed at, for the, at this time. Second one would be Central Las Americas, which is the Latino Elder Program, and we're going to get an update, I believe, by Ms. Roxana Gomez. Mr. Gomez. Roxana. Okay. Good evening, Mr. Clark. Good evening, everybody. I just want to take the opportunity to say thank you for the support that Latino Elder Program received from the town and to ask you help to keep running the program. I know it's uh, not part of the town, but if any company, any uh, organization can help us to keep running the program. I have 40 members, 35 active right now, and it's like giving them a candy and now taking the candy away. Um, I want these people to continue feeling part of the community. Um, they are wonderful. They are learning different things. They are socializing and meet new people. I have uh, maybe most of the group here. They decide to come and support me and support the program, support Central Las Americas. Um, I appreciate if they, anybody, the town, can help us and to give ideas or to give any um, any donation <laughs> or any funds to keep running the program. Um, I have uh, one lady that she wants to say something very briefly. I am the server, and she's the one who being served, so she can say how she feels about the program. Andrea. Please go. If you could use right the here. microphone, please. She's the queen of the program. <laughs> <laughs> okay. My name is Andrea Ortiz. I'm one of the members of the program. And I have to say myself, I think uh, we was waiting for this kind of opportunity for many, many years to have something that we can depend and we can have some. I call good time because uh, we have a beautiful person as a coordinator, and I think she's the type of the person that she had that grace to work with the elderly people, and uh, we are very proud of her. And we are hoping that we can keep her for a long time, not to say goodbye in October, and I have to say that I am uh, living in Southridge for many years, and I know most of the people that they are going to the center now. And believe me, I'm surprised myself because I know some people that they never go out except a doctor appointment or a church. And uh, when I see them very happy there in the center and enjoy the program, they laugh, they dance, they talk, and I'm the one that I'm happy for them because I think now they feel like home with somebody who we share <coughs> and sometimes 12 o'clock and we don't want to go home because all the faces look happy and they enjoy it and especially 
she take care of us very well. And that's why I'm hoping that some, some, for some place, somewhere, and I know she's working hard and put an application and call people to get the grants, you know, the money to pay. And I'm hoping that somebody hear her voice and say, here I am, or somebody get in touch with the person who came, donate the money to keep the program going. And like I say, well, I, if I'm going to talk, I have a lot of things to say, but I'm happy, and they are happy, and she's happy, and we are more happy if we hear that somebody have the donation for our program. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, getting old. <laughs> uh, so once again, thank you very much, Mr. Manager, for the opportunity. Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the Council. Um, we are we are here specifically to appeal to you to give us the opportunity to solicit once again the block grant funding for this program. When we submitted the proposal initially to the town of Southbridge, we proposed that we would serve a total. A 50, reach 50 seniors in a 12 to 16 month um, uh, period and have 35 active members of the, of the program participating in this program. This program began, as you know, on January 5th of this calendar year and already we have met the objectives that we were supposed, that we reached, uh, that we proposed in the, in, in the um, as we first started the program. We have 35 active members here to date, and we will have a lot more if you give us the opportunity to continue this program. Let me just tell you a little bit about what we're doing as on the part of the organization to leverage the funds that, uh, that uh, the town of Southbridge has given to us. Since this program began and since we submitted the proposal to the town of Southbridge, Central Las Americas has submitted a proposal to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and has begun a program called um, Adult Foster Care Program. This is going to not only provide additional services to the seniors that we serve through this program, but to other seniors throughout the region. It's important also for you to, um, to know that we have submitted a proposal to the Health Foundation of Central Massachusetts where we are actually going to look specifically at the seniors that are participating in our program, both in the Worcester program as well as in the Southbridge program, and specifically those seniors who have identified mental health and in particular um, depression as one of, the, one of the issues that they're dealing with. Through this uh, grant, which we believe we will be successful in securing, uh, we will be able to identify 40 individuals that have um, expressed uh, that depression has been a problem in their life and be able to provide um, intervention to 20 of those seniors in sort of a, a project. But in addition to that, at the end of that program, we're going to secure the mechanism by which we will continue to be able to provide that intervention to seniors that are identified with, with depression. In addition, we have a new proposal that we're working on that we'll, sub we'll submitting to the state, to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, to provide personal care services to seniors that are either um, stuck at home or have lim uh, some limited needs and are able to participate in our program but cannot do it on a regular basis and need assistance at home. Um, and while there may be other organizations um, that are providing similar services, I will tell you that um, uh, no criticism to anyone, but we are able to reach this population better than anyone else. We know how to reach them. We know how to get them to interact. We know how to provide the services they need. And so we are working uh, with, the, with this, the systems that are already in place to leverage the resources that the town has invested in this program to better serve the population and to better and, and to hopefully continue to provide funding for the future for this program. Um, we are also working in partnership, we're in, in discussions right now with a current major provider in the area to possibly team up and, and submit a proposal to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts
for an, an adult day health program that would serve this population. <clears throat> These things uh, would not have been possible but for your investment. Because you invested in this program, we realized there was a significant need in the town of Southbridge, particularly serving this population. We are committing ourselves to continue to bring additional resources to this program, whether it is through an adult foster care program or a PCA program that we, PCA program that we will implement, or working in partnership with other resources in town um, to make sure that we continue uh, to meet the needs of these programs. And we're asking you, um, the town, to please give us the opportunity to resubmit the proposal for, to, to, for the block grant funding uh, for this program. We recognize that there are a lot of community organizations in town. We recognize that everyone has a need, but as you can see, this is a, a doubly vulnerable population. Um, the Latino community in Southbridge is growing exponentially. I don't even know what the, what the final figures are from the, from the last census. But before the census, it, it was over 25%. And so, um, so it's big. In addition to that, we have already identified that seniors and Latino seniors in particular are, are very vulnerable to depression. This program, the Latino Elder Program in Southbridge, um, is bringing those seniors out, is getting them to interact, is getting them to meet their neighbors, to socialize, and um, I, I, I do understand that a number of you have uh, taking, taken the opportunity to visit the program, and you see what is happening. Beyond serving this particular population, these seniors are now interacting with seniors from the, from the Southbridge Community Center, something that has been tried for a very long time with little or no success. So we are here to ask you to give us the opportunity to submit a proposal again because we know that it's money well spent and we're leveraging it and bringing a lot more resources to town to serve this vulnerable population. Thank you for the opportunity and I'd love to answer any questions if you have them. Council Moriarty, did you have something you wanted to say? Well, it's uh, one question I, I more or less had and I, I suppose at the moment it's, it's uh, changed based on, on the presentation. Uh, so through you to the manager if possible, uh, is that something that we is that a request that uh, is feasible in terms of legalities and such in terms of allowing them to pursue again through the town and, and CDGB and everything else? Just uh, in, in terms of the the details, uh, the funding for this uh, came from the community development block grant. The community development block grant is a federal program that has fairly strict guidelines that the town tries to comply with. And I think two years ago is the first time that we opened it up to social programs. It had never been previously opened up to social programs. But the, um, the community development director presented to the town, to the town council, a desire to open it up to social programs. And the council, I believe, gave its support to that endeavor with the idea that it would be um, kind of startup money to kind of let someone get going, but not to be a sustaining money. And I don't honestly recall off the top of my head whether that was a community development block grant requirement for the one year and then to move people on, or whether that was something that the council had put in. I don't know if any of the members have specific recollection, but. I think that if, if a request was to be made, certainly that could be something that would be vetted to see if it is, in fact, possible uh, in accordance with federal guidelines. So obviously we have two thresholds to meet. One is the federal threshold, and certainly they, they give us the money, so we have to follow their rules. Uh, but then the second is, if it is up to town discretion, I know that uh, myself and staff pay a lot of due deference to the wishes of the council when it comes to policy directions of the, of the community. So if the council wanted to continue a social program, that would be something certainly that we would, we would entertain seriously. I, I think, uh, you know, in the past, uh, you know, various grants and, and such have, have been very beneficial. Uh, there are some that have not, you know, more or less sputtered. Uh, I, I think from, from what we've seen and from what I've heard, not just tonight, but, but other nights as well, uh, this is clearly one that's, that's working. So I, I would think that uh, it would behoove us to support them in, in any way we, we possibly can. Um, and then the only other question I had was, was more so for the, the, the folks in charge here. 
uh, what does it what what kind of funds does it typically cost to run the program for the year well uh, when we submitted the proposal to the town uh, we submitted a proposal um, that added transportation and had some other uh, costs associated when we received the grant we received a grant for fifty thousand dollars for the year and we've been able to work with that um, it, it costs more than that uh, because we, we, we cover um, some of the costs associated with, with the administration of the program from the perspective of um, uh, oversight as well as additional support. We commit ourselves um, that if you give us one more year, we will work hard to make sure that we are able to fully fund this program through the partnerships that will continue to develop as well as through the programs and, and contract proposals that we're submitting to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts which means that if we understand that we'll have one more year, we will work that much harder to make sure that we can, that we can make sure that this program is sustainable beyond that. Um, the challenge that we face is that, you know, we sort of started this program. Uh, we recognize the, the, the importance of making sure that this is not something that the, that the town will have to bear uh, for other years and give opportunity to other programs to, to get started. But we commit to you, Centro Las Americas is an organization that is growing significantly. Last week, um, we had, uh, a week ago Friday, we had our uh, um, staff outing. And at the staff outing, I presented to our employees um, the statistics in terms of the, prog the old programs and the new programs, the old budget, the 2012 budget, and the 2013 budget. And this year, because of the things that are happening at Centro Las Americas, we've grown 42%. That means these new programs that we're putting in place. And these are things that are going to be able to sustain a program like this, which is a mission <coughs> program that has such a hard time getting funding from other sources. So we're, we're here to do whatever uh, you need us to, uh, and, and we're asking for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just my recollection, recollection of having been involved with the processes, um, and, and my recommendation would be obviously that first we need to go to economic development, and we need to we need to be um, verify things with mm -hmm. Ms. Ackley because mm -hmm. that would be the the step to do this. Yes. Sitting up here and wishing, you know, that that we drop a present doesn't work. Um, we need to actually make sure we cross mm -hmm. the T's, dot the I's. But my recollection was, um, you know, one time and that if the program had a significant change or development then potentially could be considered. It's also my understanding that this year's funds are, are gone. We, that was mm -hmm. what was voted on last fall um, is, is given up for this year, you know, the, those programs that were um, donated that money or uh, awarded that money. That's done for this year. Then the next set, if the council so chooses to give more social service monies to, um, will come up again when this, as the CDPG grant money flows again. So. Mm -hmm. There would be no money, my understanding, there would be no additional funds before 2013 anyway. Right. So we, just we recognize being, that. Okay. Yeah, and we then, recognize um, that, that this is through December of 2012. Right. Yeah. And, and even then, the process is, is quite lengthy. But I think first step first is, is really to get to Ms. Ackley and, and get the um, what it is and where it all came from in terms of criteria and what we agreed on. Because this isn't even something that we have to continue. Those funds can either go for town projects or this being considered a town project, a social service town project. So we have that um, flexibility a bit to keep all the funding for specific, say, structural improvements, that types of things. Or in our case, we thought it was very important once the state allowed us to, or the feds allowed us to give money to social service programs, we saw the value in that. And, and as a council, we made sure we helped with some of those programs. So that's just my input for tonight. So we hear you. I think everybody feels what you're feeling. and. Um, I think our next step is to move it and then bring it into subcommittee. I believe it comes under H. Yeah, the EHS. No, it's EHS. 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 Yeah. 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 Right. Right. So that, that would just be my suggestion as we move forward. Okay. So if we could be informed that as to the subcommittee meeting mm -hmm. when it comes back, we'll be present and we'll okay. make a presentation. Thank this you for the thank opportunity. Thank you very much. And you're doing great work, by the way. I love what I see there. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. On to um, we have a presentation by Will Kanoya. Yeah, I'm just going to provide a little. Okay, please do. Just um, we had received a request at I believe the last council meeting uh, with the one of the new members of the council wanted to have a uh, overview of different departments. 
So I uh, endeavored to accomplish that. And what we'll do over the next probably several meetings, uh, have individual members of the uh, various town staff come out, different department heads introduce themselves, talk a little bit about what their uh, operation is, how we interact with the public, and then if there's a few questions, I did tell staff to try to keep it to five or ten minutes so we'd have a chance to actually get meetings uh, continuing on. So, Will Knoyer is our first up from the assessor's office. Uh, good evening. Thank you. My name is Will Knoyer. I'm the principal assessor and IT manager. I want to thank you for this opportunity to tell you what we and the Board of Assessors do. I also want to thank you for the opportunity of letting me go first. So <laughs> give it my take. I'm sure it's going to be refined by other department heads. And the five minutes or ten minutes, I'll do my very best. Okay, um, so I am Will Knoyer. I'm the Principal Assessor, IT Manager. I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I was originally an elected member of the Board of Assessors from 1989 to 2001. At that time, I became the appointed Principal Assessor, handling the function full-time. In 2006, the IT Manager responsibil responsibility, handling IT functions for the Town Hall was added. I'm a Massachusetts accredited assessor as certified by the is a tough one, Massachusetts Association of Assessing Officers. I'm past president of the Worcester County Assessing Association and I currently serve on the executive board of that association. Um, the other two members of the board of assessors are Fran Biscay. He was elected in the early 1990s, approximately 1992, so he's got about 20 years experience. The other elected member is Kara Donovan. She was elected in 2006, to, and she serves to the current time. She was also the principal assessor from 97 to 2001, so she has about two, 10 years. So between those two and myself with 23 years, we have about 53 years of assessing experience in Southbridge. Okay, assessors, what do we do? One of our primary, primary tasks is to value and appraise all of the property which is approximately 6,000 parcels in the town of Southbridge annually. And we do that based on the prior year sales. Everything we do is, virtually everything we do, is statutorily or regulatory required. We don't have the option to not do it, to skip it, to, do, to cut corners. It's required. And how do we do that? Well, basically, we have a model of every property in town in our CAMA system, CAMA standing for Computer Aided Mass Appraisal System. So basically, we have a model or profile of every property based on the land, based on the size, the shape, the age, the quality, the components, the condition, the neighborhood it's in, and many other factors. But and so every property has a, has a component, a model, which we value based on current market conditions. And we do that based on the sales that occurred in our community. So what do we do? We inspect all of the sales in our property annually because they are the comps for setting the values. We inspect and update all the properties that have applied for building permit. So virtually everybody who takes out a building permit, we go to that house to look and to see what that did to that house, how it changed it. We have an on ongoing mandatory inspection program of all properties in town. Uh, we reinspect every property at least once every nine years. All of the above, above functions we do in house with our existing, with our current staff. Um, we send out and review income and expense questionnaires, which we mail to all commercial, industrial, and apartment building owners. This information is critical in determining the income generated and thus the value of those types of properties. We mail out forms of list, which is a personal property return required of all businesses. This, is al this allows us to value all the business equipment fairly and accurately, which is called business equipment being personal property. We or our contractor also visits every one of these accounts on the personal property side every three years and physically inventories all of the equipment. Um, as you know, the town council voted uh, about 2005 to exempt personal property accounts with less than $1,000 in value. But even though they are not taxed, they still need to be valued to determine that they're less than $1,000. Um, by the way, less than $1,000, if a val an account was valued at $1,000, last year that annual tax would be $1,783, which is the cost to collect that exceed the cost to the, the revenue that it brings in just about. Okay, in addition to the above, which we do every year, we go through revaluation and recertification with the Department of Revenue every three years. This is the same process, but much more de detailed 
and it requires specialized expertise in many areas of appraisal practice. That's why we need a contractor to assist us. Currently, we have Vision Government Solutions assisting us in the real property revaluation and real estate research consultants, RRC, assisting us with personal property. We and our vendor, during the revaluation program every three years, we and our vendor um, conduct a full field review. This means we do an exterior inspection of all properties in town. At this time, we review, again review, condition, grade, other conditions that it's affect its value to be sure we get it right and it's fair and consistent with other properties. Um, the Department of Revenue then will review, verify everything by, an by analyzing all the statistical data and also by inspecting sample properties and conducting a data quality study of all of our properties. After detailed analysis, and this is the step we're in right now with the Department of Revenue, after detailed analysis and meeting all certification standards, hopefully the town gets certification approval timely. Some towns it takes, not timely, it, it happens months after the deadlines and tax bills get delayed and so forth. That's never happened in all of our time here. Okay, um, following all of the above, we then submit a new growth to the Department of Revenue for approval and we talk about that at classification time. That new growth is an increase in the tax levy that doesn't affect it, but existing taxpayers. Okay, this valuation process is critical as it ensures that everybody pays only their proportional share of the tax levy based on their proportional ownership of the town. Okay. Let me give a quick example of what that means because people ask me uh, about their value and the taxes and all of that. It's really, a, it's a reasonably simple concept. If there was a very small town with 10 houses valued at $100,000 a piece, totals a million dollars, they would each pay uh, $100,000 divided by a million, 10% of the tax levy. But if for some reason we valued Councilor Langevin's house at 150000 and he would be paying 15% of the tax levy of the town. So the, the point is, it's critical that he be valued correctly. If his house is only worth 100000 and these are all hypothetical numbers, of course, but if it's only 100000 he should be only paying 10% of the total tax levy because he owns 10% of the town. Okay. So what else does the board do? The Board of Assessors completes the recap at tax rate setting time. Um, and calculates the tax rate each year. We do this in conjunction with all the other departments, the finance director, the town manager, and the town council. You recall the classification hearing, the votes we have. But it is the, the Board of Assessors' responsibility in, to sign and submit to the Department of Revenue for review and approval for the tax rate. After all of the above process, we create about 6,000 tax bills, and the tax collector's office mails them. I call them Christmas cards because we mail them right at Christmas, right after Christmas. We then handle and process all of the exemption applications from seniors, disabled veterans, and others who qualify under the law, de under the laws detailing their exemptions, as well as the senior tax rebate program. After the bills are mailed, we also get abatement applications for people who feel that their properties are overvalued. overvalued. We inspect these properties and review and adjust the values if appropriate. Um, motor vehicle excise tax is another big responsibility of ours and a big revenue uh, producer for the town. We prepare and process approximately 15,000 excise tax bills a year, which bring in about a million two in revenue per year in revenue. We then get and process about 700 abatement applications from people who sell, trade in, uh, or otherwise dispose of those vehicles during the year. Uh, we provide ongoing information to realtors, other professionals, other tax town departments, and particularly to taxpayers in regards to the real estate and related issues in town. We monitor the activity and we usually receive over 100 in-office visitors or telephone calls per week. Uh, we are online daily with the Worcester County Registry of Deeds tracking sales, uh, tracking sales and ownership changes on properties. Typically, if the deed is recorded at 4 o'clock, in Worcester at the Registry of Deeds, our staff will have our database updated by 10 o'clock the next morning. Um, we manage the Mass General Law Chapter 61 programs that discount the value and taxation for agricultural, horticultural land and forestry under the program. Um, this helps promote farming and helps maintain open space on large tracts of land. 
Uh, we manage and prepare all of the GIS map updates for our parcels along with our vendor, Applied Geographics. The maps are all online and can be accessed through the town, accessed through the town website along with our assessors online database. I, I, people all the time, this is one that I'd like to tout a little bit. If you go to our town website, Google Town of Southbridge, right on the front page, it should say uh, GIS online data and you can pop up a map of any property in town, any street in town, any neighborhood in town. You can look at the prop, you can look through that, you can look at a property value of any property, you can look at the ownership, and there's a link to our assessor's online database, which will give you all the information we have about all of the properties in town. Um, this is just a summary of our major taxation functions, but there's a huge amount of administration support functions that go along with this and support these functions. Okay. In addition, we also handle water sewer billing. Um, when the town decided to purchase the Southbridge Water Supply Company in 1990, the water supply Southbridge Water Supply Company did their own billing. They were a private company. Well, when we bought them, we wanted to take that billing in-house. So with, when that happened, we had to find a place where we're going to do that. Well, that came to the assessors. And that all of the water and sewer billing functions were added to the responsibility of the assessor's office at that time, um, with the same amount of staff as we have now. But it's neither here nor there. Uh, this function entails preparing and billing over 4,000 accounts per quarter or 16,000 per year. There are also weekly final bills, service billings, and other routine daily tasks. After these bills are mailed, we then process any abatement applications that may be submitted. Um, until about a year ago, every one of the meter readings from these water and sewer billings had to be entered manually from a meter reading card into the billing software. With the new radio read meter program, which we are now about 90% of the way to being completely automated. However, even with the automated system, there is still a great deal of time spent with the outliers, errors, exceptions, and other issues that require additional attention. But that's a huge step in minimizing the uh, re repetitive 1980 data entry stuff. Um, okay, as I said earlier, beginning in, in 2006, I became responsible for managing the IT functions for all town hall departments. Uh, this entails maintaining the servers, PCs, software, and other peripherals. I do this personally and also assisted by a vendor, Global Data Systems, who has the certified specialist available for everything I don't know, which is a lot. Um, that's a brief summary of what we did. It's under five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Under 10 minutes. <laughs> Thank you. Any questions? Any questions? No? Thank, Thank you. you Thank you very much, Will. Okay. I'm moving along to agenda item number nine, Citizens Forum. Do I have any citizens in the audience who wish to come forward? Please state your name and address. James Satilli, 83 Pinedale Street. Eight Feet Council, please. Councilors, it was apparent over the last several election cycles <clears throat> that a large segment of Southbridge voters have suffered from a perception that the legislative branch of town government, when seated each July, was less prepared to handle our affairs in a cognizant and professional manner. After prolific discussions with many like-minded individuals, it became abundantly clear that a political logjam was being permanently created as a consequence of half-truths and half-hearted inspired demagoguery from both the left and the right. Because of this, it appeared to many that our politi su political subdivision was not moving forward for the betterment of the community. A concerned group of citizens began to search for a common thread that was a, the fundamental issue apparently holding Southbridge hostage to what many consider larger interest than for the common good of the people. This was reflected in attempts to change the form of government or to filibuster issues to a point where the authors on each side 
did not recognize their original points. With that thought in mind, we believe that it would be more appropriate to create a device that would allow our elected representatives to be more painstakingly deliberative in their decision processes. Suggestions were many. On the other hand, they included too many documents that each council could use effectively. Discussion, set, discussion settled on producing a handbook for councilor-ready reference and use during their deliver, deliberative duties. It is with our compliments that we present this contribution of time and fortune to assist each of you during the coming year. That handbook contains the Constitution of the United States of America, the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the Southbridge Home Rule Charter, and the Code of Bylaws for the Town of Southbridge. We made it available to have it ready. Uh, you folks could have it ready at your service while you're working. Uh, rather than have to uh, delay issues and uh, return later with, a, with a, a decision. In addition, I've, uh, I'll distribute a suggested agenda, agenda items for consideration by the Southbridge Town Council during the 2012-2013 legislative year. Number one. Consider installing an open public non-encrypted Wi-Fi system layering the entire downtown area. Connective ability will draw electronically ready citizens to use the downtown area more and develop into a, and develop into a magnet for enhanced business and interchange possibilities by interested entrepreneurs. Equip the town council with computers tablets, and other electronic state-of-art capabilities to provide more efficient progression of legislation. Remove payment requirements for copies of the town budget proposals. Publish at no cost to the public copies of the town manager's quarterly reports. Name and identify a town council endorsed and appoint a discussion group of selected citizens who will provide a public report to the town council on the virtues of a town council versus a town meeting form of government. Recognize and reinstate from archival materials all Civil War, Grand Army of the Republic, Spanish and American War, World War I, World War II memorabilia for use in a town-sponsored museum depicting the military contributions of the town of Southbridge. Consider forming a town council endorsed and appointed committee to assist the merging of other non-official historical archives into a single, quote, center of history, quote, unquote, museum located in the downtown area to encourage enhanced tourist interest in Southbridge, Massachusetts. These are provided for you folks uh, to assist you in your deliberations, and I thank you for taking the time to listen to me. Thank you, Mr. Sotilli. Do we have any other citizens who wish to come forward? Okay, I'm moving right along. Agenda item number 10, a vote to accept the warrants for the state primary scheduled for Thursday, September 6, 2012. So moved. Any discussion? A roll call, please. Council McDonald? Yes. Council Moriarty? Yes. Council Nicola? Yes. Councilor Pelliquin? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clemens? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Nine yes? Thank you. Uh, agenda item 11, vote to ratify change order number eight between the town of Southbridge and Consigli Construction for a no cost change order. We're going to take a, a short recess. Five minutes.
I have water, please. Thank you. Agenda item number 11, vote to ratify change order number 8 between the Town of Southbridge and Consigli Construction for a no-cost change order for the rendering of an extension of substantial completion for the middle high school. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Okay. Can we have a roll call, please? Council Moriarty? Yes. Council Nicola? Yes. Council Pelequin? Yes. Council Regis? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clemens? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Nine yes. Thank you. Agenda item number 12, vote to ratify change order number nine between the Town of Southbridge and Consigli Construction in the amount of $19,291 as described in the memo attached and dated July 16th, 2012. So moved. Second. Any discussion? A roll call, please. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Pelequin? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clemens? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Micucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Moriarty? Yes. Nine yes? Thank you. Agenda number 13, vote to authorize the school business manager to enter into contracts for the purchase of equipment related to the media center, which is the library, and the media classroom which is a small studio in the middle high school. For the middle high school, in the amount of $120,000, with said funding to come from two sources, one, school technology budget up to $60,000, and two, cable committee capital fund in the amount of $60,000, said amount to also be approved by the cable committee. So Second. Any discussion? Madam Chair, um, I do have the school business manager that would like to make a comment. Okay. I just think under two, I think there's an up two. In the amount? Up two. Of of the okay, Thank in you. the amount of up to $60,000. This is for the cable committee capital fund. Is that right, Mr. Wiggins? Yes. Okay, thank you. Did you Madam Chair, may I a comment on this? Could I ask for this item to be tabled? Um, we did not get the equipment list from Mr. Wiggins yet on exactly what was going to be purchased. And um, just to be frank, on a personal note, I've had comments and emails sent to me uh, stating that 60000 would be in excess, um, too much money to be taking out of the capital fund. Um, also considering looking back maybe about four or five years ago, um, if I'm not mistaken, the school already received some funding for some additional equipment which they currently have that is if I'm not mistaken not being used in, in the new facility um, it's kind of almost like stuff was purchased and now it's just kind of being tossed aside so at least for now until we can go over the equipment list and see exactly what is being ordered I would ask if this item could be tabled until we receive the list from uh, Mr. Wiggins um, Madam Chair. Okay, Mr. Clark. I just uh, and actually I had not had a chance to to talk with the uh, the committee chair. Uh, part of the reason why we put in the, this motion that set amount to be approved by the cable committee was for the purposes of having that discussion occur and to see what amount. And I, I do appreciate the the correction of up to uh, sixty thousand. Mm -hmm. Just in terms of timing, uh, the school will be turned over to us any day. <coughs> And we have, I think the first day of school is September 4th. Uh, we obviously can't wait till the last minute to put any equipment in. So what I would ask the council is that we vote it with the acknowledgement, which is already in here, is that it, it does have to be vetted and approved by the cable committee. So the 60,000, the up to 60,000, would not become operable until the cable committee formally votes that. Mm -hmm. And that's what this motion has, because I knew that conversation hadn't occurred, and mm -hmm. I wanted to have that opportunity for it to occur. So, yeah, and I, I think the, the school's saying that they're amenable to that. So I would like to go ahead, just because it takes a while to order this stuff, to put it in, and then have it operational. And I know 30 days sounds like a, a long time, but it's really not for ordering equipment. So we will have that meeting and, and move uh, per, um, prodigiously to, to get it accomplished as quickly as we can. I do have uh, one question. 
perhaps if I could ask Mr. Wiggins, he might be able to answer it for me. Um, is there a class and syllabus set up for this particular equipment? To the podium. We are in the process of going through and setting up the classes and syllabuses right now because this program, as far as the media classroom, is going to be expanded into some broadcast journalism and some other options that currently we haven't been able to do. Um, there's also the, because of the new technology, there's things that we're going to be able to integrate, such as incorporating the students, for example, to be able to do sort of a morning broadcast where they're providing the news. Um, the fact that the media classroom is also the studio from which you'll be able to broadcast items from the cafeteria, from the media center, and of course from the auditorium, the gymnasium. So there's a number of things that are new here as part of this program that, and that's part of why we're developing this list. We absolutely want the input of the cable, cable uh, company, uh, uh, committee. The other thing is any items purchased with cable money remain cable equipment. Okay, they remain, they're on loan to us for use in the school, but they remain cable equipment. And I'm hearing that there's equipment that we have that we're putting aside. If there's equipment that we have that we can reuse in a new school, we're happy to use, to look at that and use that to reduce the cost of what we would need here. My understanding, however, is what we have right now is the analog equipment, and this is all a digital system. So that's my understanding why there's not a whole lot of what had been purchased in the past that we can reuse. Council McDonald. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have a couple of concerns that have already, some have already been addressed that we had purchased this equipment that remained unused at the current high school. Second thing is I don't like how this is being split up. Uh, it's double dipping. It's two bites at the apple. We're taking $60,000 from taxpayers in one form and then $60,000 from ratepayers who are also taxpayers, just like what we did with some other previous equipment, and I'm opposed to that type of uh, monetary uh, shell game, for lack of a better term, is how I'll look at it. Uh, the other thing is, is that we are supposed to be a body that approves these fiscal things when they're brought to us, completed, not saying, well, we're going to go ahead and give tacit approval and then let a lower body, which is a advisory, say, we'll let them vote on it. Well, what a we know what the vote's going to be because we've already told them what to vote, and it shouldn't be that way. We keep violating process and procedure. These things should have all have been inventoried in preparation for moving to the new school, and we should know exactly what is usable and can go over there so we know what kind of money we're going to be spending. Uh, this is capital equipment moving it from, or capital budget type stuff. We're going to be buying capital equipment with it. It's a large sum of money. I understand the short time frame, but lack of preparation doesn't, on, you know, on somebody else's part, does not constitute an emergency on our part. I make a motion that we table this until such time as we can get further information and get a complete listing of information as what could be used in a more accurate pricing of what's going to be needed. I'll, I'll second that motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Before I entertain a vote, do, is there any further discussion? Hold on, please. Mr. Clark, go ahead. Just uh, to provide some clarity, uh, this isn't the traditional capital budget that we have as part of the town's overall operating budget. There was a negotiated agreement with uh, Charter to provide operating dollars on an annual basis. There was also a, an agreement to provide capital funds from Charter to make sure that we had the ability to do uh, some work in the high school uh, building uh, that I believe the appropriation on that, not the appropriation, the, the money the town received and has already received, it's already in the bank from charter, is $100,000. Uh, the committee had previously voted their capital budget that was presented to charter, that was presented to this town council, that was voted by this town council, that out of that $100,000 in capital, there was a list of inventory that was anticipated to be in the media classroom that is now being presented. So this isn't something that has come to surface at the last minute. This is something that is an intent that was made um, 
probably back almost two years ago at this point, specifically what's being done now is specifically the details of what goes in, what MSBA purchased for that classroom versus what the cable committee would like to have in that classroom in order to be able to broadcast live out to the community is the equipment that we're talking about that's needed uh, for use in that studio. So to characterize this as a 11th hour thing or, or something that is, you know, I, I think just think that's an unfair characterization to, to characterize it that way. But I appreciate that not all details are always laid out to folks and I think it's always incumbent upon me to try to lay out what the process was to, to bring us to this date. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Hi, my name is Paul Zotos, and I ran the cable office for 10, 12 years. And I, I worked on this school project, and another gentleman, his name is Ted Dubsky, he's, he was let go uh, last year. He was a technology expert that helped, helped me build the studio that's at the town hall. He was a technology expert that built the studio that's now at the old high school. And we built it in such a way that it was made to be moved up to the new high school. Nobody made a decision whether that equipment was gonna go to Wells or Southbridge High or be used in some media center in the middle. Back then we didn't know, but we made sure that the equipment was digital, not analog. And the cameras are digital, not analog. And the only thing we can't move from the auditorium is the wiring because we wired everything right into the building. So no wires would be on the ground. So the whole studio can be moved either to Wells or to Selvage High. And the cameras can be used anywhere. They always are. They always have been. Um, it, this is the 11th hour, and it's all being done backwards. What I said the last time I addressed the town at the subcommittee meeting is, there is no such thing as government-controlled public television. There is no such thing. This is why. When I was there, they took $160,000 in 2005. 2008, they took... $30,000 a year for the last five years. They've spent way too much money this year on personnel and uh, probably me and a lot of other things. And so 30 days isn't enough time to do anything. Mr. Ellie promised me a teacher. We, we, we formed a club at Selfridge High, not a, not, a, not a classroom, because there is no teacher at Selfridge High. We formed a, a video club, and I was promised a teacher. By the time we got to the new school, we were going to have a real teacher who went to school and, and, and learned to be an a video educator. There's a, there's a group called Video Educators of New England. It works out of uh, Wachusett Community College. Our teacher should be a member of that group if he's teaching video in New England. Then he's in a network. Then he would have a, there would be a curriculum, and he would be a teacher, and when he would work with all the other teachers, and then when our kids graduate and they go to the community colleges and the colleges, they'll be up to, they'll be up to speed. Because what they're teaching now is not even standard television production at the high school. It's, it's a mishmash of everybody's idea what television is. But we were promised a real teacher. And how you can spend this money now before you have the class, before you have the teacher, and you're competing with high schools that have these things already in place. Tantasqua has had a teacher for 10 years at Tantasqua. Graduated from video school, went to college. Tantasqua has that. Bay Path doesn't have any video teachers. They're behind the ball. We're, we were almost there, and then now we've dropped the ball. We've got 30 days to hire a teacher, figure out a curriculum, get a class going, and make sure this all works. But we lost Paul Zoros, and we lost Ted Dubsky, and everybody's scrambling now. And when, when Mr. Clark did the contract, I wanted capital money. You, you do a 10-year contract, but you're operating a studio that I built in 2002. So a new studio should have been at the town hall. A new studio should be built at the high school. And a new studio should be built downtown for the public. There's three. So how the, how the school now gets half the money, I don't know. If anything, maybe they should get a third of the money. But they've probably already gotten their third. So it's government, the town hall TV, the school TV, and where's the public station? The public has been waiting patiently for their own little place that they can work downtown. Can't go in the town hall. If, we go, if you do it at the high school, we'll have to wait till Wells is done using it, Selvage High is done using it. Maybe we can use it on the weekends. Maybe we can use it after school. We won't know. And that's not the way the public studio was supposed to run. We, we, use, we, we use the town hall as a public studio for many years and I think it worked pretty okay. good. 
We used to work on Sundays, work on Saturdays. Mr. Zotos, is this, I need are you also? Can I get five more minutes? If it's not, if it's got anything to do with what we have here on the vote, because I didn't see you at the subcommittee meeting. I didn't see a lot of the speakers at the which, subcommittee, which meeting, subcommittee meeting, the, at EHS subcommittee meeting where we discussed this. That would have been a good idea for you to, to attend that if meeting at that point. About, if I would have been told yeah. about it, I would have been oh, there. It was posted. The committee wasn't told about it. It was posted. I'm not done. Tommy Yao, I talked to Tommy Yao today. He's the vice Can chairman. Can you please hold on? I make a motion that we give Mr. Zotis another additional time. We'll give him three more minutes if the council so chooses. Do I have a second? Second. I'll second that Any uh, further discussion on this? Show of hands. All in favor? Okay. Three Thanks more minutes. Everybody. I talked to Tommy Al today. Tommy Al was the vice chairman of the cable committee, probably the longest sitting member that's still there. Bob Dupree resigned because of this was going on. Bob Dupree will work for 40 years for us, teaching at the school and teaching video. He quit because he knew this wasn't right. I, Tom, Tommy Yao is in Hawaii right now. The vice chairman had no idea what you people were doing. Never mind that I didn't go to the v EHS committee. Tommy Yao wasn't even told you were taking $60,000 tonight. He's in Hawaii. I told him at 4 o'clock. And he said a word that I can't repeat on television. <laughs> Thank you. So whether I was there, the vice chairman wasn't there. The chairman's not happy with the deal. Paul Zotos didn't even want to be here tonight, but I came, and after listening to what I heard, had to get up, Kathy. This just isn't right. It's counselor to you. Counselor, I'm sorry. It just isn't right. And so I think we should all take a deep breath. Let's have a meeting, next cable meeting. I'd like to be there. You should be there. We should all be there. We should get Ted Dubsky. We should find out what we're doing because it's up to our kids. We want kids to go to this school. I've been teaching kids how to do video and salvage for 12 years, and I want this school to teach. I don't want to play a game. We gave out grades for three years, and we had no teacher. We gave out awards at graduation, and we have no teacher. Grades and awards with no teacher? Nobody certified? It's ridiculous. So everybody take a deep breath. Sorry I talked too much, but uh, I've held it in for quite a while. Let's do this right. Let's all get together. Let's sit down. Let's talk about it. There's plenty of time if we do it right. If we do it wrong, it'll always be wrong. I, two years ago, we got the video, we got the school channel back. Right now, you can watch the Bartlett game and basketball and I don't know what else, graduation. So what are they doing with our equipment? We don't know because there's no teacher. There's nobody to teach them anything up there. So we've, we've, we've been running three shows over and over again on the school channel for six months. I just watched the Bartlett game again. We keep winning. <laughs> But the station is losing. So let's all get together and make, let's make this TV as great as I envisioned it. I envisioned it, and, and, and I've got what I envisioned, but now it's being taken away. That's okay. But let's not, let's not take it away from our kids. We want kids to go to this new school. Let's build a studio, and let's build it right. I'd like to be the first one to sing up there. Thank you. We have a motion on the, on the, um, on the floor to table this. I've got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? No? Madam Chair. Just, just one wait, quick wait, question. Wait. Did you oh, have something sorry. you wanted to say? Yes, but you can go first. No, go ahead. Oh. Can I have a microphone? Thank you. I would just like to say that um, I will be voting in favor of tabling this motion. Um, and it's because I... I did go to the cable committee meeting this past week and this did not come up for a vote at the cable committee meeting because they did not know precisely what equipment they had to purchase for this and I think that this is a conversation I would like to have with the cable committee and I'd like the opportunity to be able to do that before voting on it. Thank you. Uh, through you to the manager to uh, somebody from the cable side, uh, do we know offhand when the next cable meeting is? If it's a time sensitive thing. Uh, Obviously, we're kind of if we're incumbent upon if we're if we're reliant on on their vote either way. I'm just curious as to when, timeline wise, how that's working. We can through you, Madam Chair. August 22nd, 6 p.m. Yeah, we can through you, Madam Chair. Go ahead. Um, certainly, we can schedule and request a meeting be scheduled earlier. Obviously, it's a 48-hour notice. You know, just in terms of, you know, it's nice that you've had a few laugh lines. But, you know, I think it's an insult that we built a $75 million school, 
Uh, the people that built it had exceptional capabilities. Uh, they've built numerous schools with cable studios in it. Uh, so, you know, this isn't a question of competency. This isn't a question about the studio not knowing what it is, not knowing where it goes. It's in there. It's, it's, it's already mostly under construction. We've come somewhat tight on the budget, and we're looking for resources to make the, the get to the final place. So what we're talking about is just getting some final equipment to plug in there. Uh, because it is coming out of money that was given for a capital purpose for school equipment, we will go through the details. But I don't think holding this up uh, tonight makes really a lot of sense. We certainly, it, it's the cable committee uh, does is responsible for the budget and how it's spent as well as myself, uh, that we will keep that budget in line and I have utmost confidence in the, uh, the school business manager that you know he will work cooperatively with us to make sure that we get the equipment that's needed. But the studio is there, it's been designed. I've seen several of them in operation designed by the design team that put together this high school project. I have the utmost confidence that they know what they're doing. And here we're just a, a few pieces of equipment short that we need to get there. So this is kind of the final stages in a, uh, in a process. In terms of the school selecting staff, you know, I think everybody knows that they're, they're trying to transition, they're trying to accomplish a lot of things, and this is one of those things that they need to accomplish. Thank you, Madam Chair. Council McDonald. Thank you, Madam Chair. <coughs> I've heard two things that I just disturbed me a little bit. Uh, one phrase was unfair characterization that this is last minute. We had Mr. Cantera, who's been working with the cable, as far as I can recall, for at least the last year, if not more, who made a statement that we have equipment that exists already that's not been used up at the current high school. And uh, then we had the business manager who's very much on the top of his game. I've seen him in, uh, since he's, he's been on the job in the school committee meetings, but he even himself attested to the fact that he didn't know whether it was digital or, or uh, analog. And then we had the previous cable access director who came up and uh, basically said it was all digital. And I, you know, if, if I give somebody approval to either use a, a used car or that give them tacit approval to go out and buy a new car, they're going to forget about looking at the used car and they're going to go and, and look at the new car. And I just don't think it's right to go against what should be the protocol. Is what When you have something, a committee that's supposed to look at something, we don't let a subcommittee vote on something after we've already approved it, then why are we going to do it with another outside committee? I understand the time delays. Uh, again, this is a large sum of money. I still don't think it's right to take $60,000 of capital. That's, rate, that's really for the rate payers. Um, for the cable system when we already have the existing equipment, which we've heard three people basically say that should be inventoried and assessed to see if it can be moved up there and used. And so I, I asked this council to table this until, so we, that to me is proper fiduciary oversight and our responsibility. Thank you, Madam Chair. Council Clements. Thank you. Through you to the town manager. Mr. Manager. Wasn't there discussion at one time when, when you were looking at the cost of, for instance, a studio that potentially we weren't even going to be able to put a studio in there, that, that MSBA and all that, we weren't even sure how we were going to be able to offer this? Is that not a fact or <coughs> maybe no, a misinterpretation on my right. part? I want to make sure it's very clear that we've managed to incorporate something into this school that originally in the design phase was kind of a dream, so to speak, or, or just a, a nice idea, but not really. That, that's correct. We had to have MSBA uh, agree to put in uh, the different elements to have a classroom. Secondly, the budget that was part of the cable license renewal, which is now at least a year or two old, probably a year old, included in it because the charter people asked us, what are you going to use this $100,000 worth of capital for? And Ted Dubsky did up a budget of $60,000. So it's not a coincidence that the 60000 is there because 60000 out of the 100000 that was voted a year ago was specifically for this purpose. So, you know, well, I, I said what I wanted to say. It's definitive in terms of it's not something that's new. It's something that was in the budget that was presented to charter. The cable committee voted on the budget. The cable committee voted the 60000 And now we're at the time in which we're actually going to spend it. And I'm requesting the council, let's authorize and just go ahead and spend what we said we were going to do in the first place. Thank you, Thank you Madam Chair. Thank you. And just to follow up to that, I, 
I do not see the concern that fellow counselors may have. We've the motion is for to appropriate up to sixty thousand dollars, also to be approved by cable cable committee. And I can understand the cart before the horse mentality that they that they're using. But the reality is, it's up to sixty thousand. It's on the approval of the cable committee, and to hold this out as we are trying to finish up a multi-million dollar project here to get these kids in and get them get them where they need to be this September I think is irresponsible at this late hour so I would say that this has got oversight it's got approval by the cable committee and all we're doing is saying there there are some funds this is where it's coming from previously budgeted previously approved I, I don't see the hold up here and, and I would support um, moving forward with this vote and not tabling speak? it. No, sir. You've had your your, your two times, we and no, address. we're going to move ahead. She's changing no, the sir. Subject. Sir. Yes. I said no. Why? And that's because, because, because you've you had why? two bites at the apple. Could a no. counselor ask why I can't speak? Because I just answered you. Second. It's oh. now we're going to take a vote. If no other members of the council, you have something further. Yes. Councilor, go ahead. Thank you. Thank <coughs> you, Madam Chair, Mr. Cantara. You had stated when you were up here that <coughs> you were comfortable what, with what Mr. Clark had stated to you, that we're going to vote on this contingent upon your recommendation from your committee. And you said you didn't have a problem with that, that you're comfortable with that, correct? Correct. Okay. I do have one comment. As far as the $60,000 is concerned, that was never brought up in the cable committee meeting um, that Mr. Dubsky requested. We can look back in the minutes, but as far as I remember, as for as long as I've been on the committee, that is not something the cable committee ever voted on. Um, I do want to make it clear. Um, I'm all for the new school. I would love to see them have a good setup and a good studio system up there. Um, in my experience of being in access in 12 plus years, $60,000 is way too much money. I know I've been working with Mr. McHugh, and we came up with certain items that came up to lower the budget number. I just, all I'm saying is I hope it does not come up to the full $60,000. Um, if I could clarify one thing, is this a one-time thing? Mm -hmm. So the next, the next uh, I think the sixth year of the, the cable contract, we get another $100,000 of capital money. Okay. So I just want to be clear, and I just want to make sure. I don't want it to sound like I'm not for the new school. I definitely am. I want to. I look forward to working with Mr. Wiggins. I'm just saying. I just want to see the numbers so that we can say, you know, and look at the equipment because we're certainly not going to tell the school how to spend their money. Uh, I certainly wouldn't want the school to come in and say, well, this is what we want. We're going to get this, you know, without some input from at least the cable committee and then going through the town council. So. Um, that's where at least I stand on that is as long as it's not up the full sixty thousand dollars, you know, and we'd have to be <coughs> in there too. You start pushing fifty, then you know, I mean that's this is where it starts to hurt. It's it we don't have an exact number. We don't know what it is. It's kinda up in the air right now and we're just waiting for that number. So um but in short I would say the vote's gonna happen, the vote will happen unless the item gets tabled, but I would just ask for it to be table until we have the exact number. So then at that point, there can be a negotiation. And I know time is short, um, but there is the fact, there is existing equipment. Regardless of whether it's digital or not, uh, a composite signal can be put into a digital and then transferred into a digital feed. The, this is a relatively inexpensive thing and without getting too te technical, these are issues that can be sorted out. It's not like they'll be stuck in the water with no equipment. There is usable equipment, it can be utilized. And if that's what happens until the time, I mean, what if something happens with the, uh, the, the quote coming in, they don't have the items or they're back ordered, you're still gonna be in a, in, in a situation where you will not have the equipment. And this does happen, sometimes you get back ordered, you can't get the things, and they're waiting and they're waiting and they're waiting. There is a backup plan, so it's not like they'll be out in the water if, if something doesn't happen right away. Um, in, in my experience. Just uh, Madam Chair, in, in fairness to uh, Mr. Cantara and, and to the question that was specifically raised, it was the, uh, the town special counsel and negotiations for the cable contract that said that we have to provide some justification for why we're asking for $200,000 in capital 
cost to be given to the town and I had requested from the cable committee two members to represent them in the negotiations and it was Mr. Dupree and Mr. Dubsky that represented them and they were the ones that had assured me that the 60,000 was related to the school and provided evidence to that fact. Uh, neither one of those gentlemen are, are now affiliated with us but uh, in fairness to Mr. Cantera, uh, he wasn't at that discussion but I knew that as part of the negotiations we were specifically requested if we're giving you $200,000 what are you going to use it for and we had to provide some justification and that justification was $60,000 for the cable studio so when I speak to the commitment being made early on that's what I'm referring to that we had a contractual commitment in our negotiations with charter that we would spend $60,000 or up to sixty thousand to to put towards the uh, the school project. Okay, okay Councilor. All right, Nelson. Okay. Hello, my name is Pam Larue. I'm at present the longest sitting member on the uh, Cable Access Advisory Committee, uh, prior to uh, Mr. Dupree that was there for many years more than myself. Um, basically, what I want to state is that uh, Mr. Iow myself we're on vacation we're not informed he's in Hawaii right now we cannot really decide on this until we have a cohesive plan I worked for 15 years in broadcasting I have a degree in broadcasting I went to an accredited college I learned from an accredited teacher that was how I got my job is because I learned from an accredited teacher we need to have someone that's accredited to be able to teach these kids and to give them their accreditation if it's just the club, why are we giving out $60,000? I do not know. But I am leaving at this present time because I am highly irritated at this moment for all this. Thank you. Council, uh, Council spoke about uh, because the cable committee person uh, was able to uh, agree with you about uh, voting contingently prior to sending it back to the lower body. So that's why you have those, it's a good idea, a timely idea to give out those handbooks. You can't do that. You're presupposing the vote. Let it go down, table it, let it go back to the committee, let it be handled right. The pond is too dirty already. Yes, it certainly is. Thank you. Okay, can we please have a roll call on the vote to table this agenda item? Councilor Peliquin? Yes. Councilor Regis? No. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? No. Councilor Langevin? No. Councilor Marcucci? No. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Council Moriarty? Yeah. Yes. Councilor Nicola? Nope. Four yes, five no. Okay. Again, bring it back up. Vote to authorize the school business manager to enter into contracts for the purchase of equipment related to the media center and the media classroom for the middle high school in the amount of $120,000 with said funding to come from two sources. One, school technology budget up to $60,000 and two, cable committee capital fund in the amount up to $60,000, said amount to also be approved by the cable committee. Second. Second. Okay. Can we have a roll call, please? Okay, we never um, the I was hoping we could amend it to say up to one hundred and twenty thousand dollars, with said funding to come from two sources. Second. It's up to the sixty thousand. Okay. I just said up to. She reread it as such. But yeah, we could do. It. Okay. We're going to waste a little more time and. I need a vote on motion and a second to vote to amend this amendment to this vote to say in the amount, the second part of it, to cable committee capital fund in the amount up to $60,000, said amount to also be approved by the cable committee. Can I get that motion, please? So, Do I get a second? Second. Roll call, please. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Vandal? 
Councilor Clements? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Micucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Moriarty? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Pelequin? Yes. Eight yes, one no? Okay. All right. Well, the vote's out there with the, amend the amended vote. The amended um, item is up there. I've got a, sec uh, a motion and a second. If there's no further discussion, can I have a roll call on this, please? Councilor Vandal? No. Councilor Clemens? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? No. Councilor Moriarty? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Pelequin? Abstain. Councilor Regis? Yes. Six yes, two no, one abstain. Thank you. Agenda item number <coughs> 14, vote to ratify the agreement between Jennifer A. Reynolds and the Town of Southbridge for aerobics classes for citizens aged 60 at the Community Center. 144 classes over the course of one year in the amount of $6,000 payable in 40 week, 48 weekly payments of $125. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Can I roll call, please? Councilor Clemens? Yes. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. Councilor Moriarty? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Pelequin? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Nine yes. Thank you. Agenda item number 15, vote to ratify amendment number five between the Town of Southbridge and Veolia, Water North America for continued wastewater treatment facilities and operations maintenance services beginning August 1, 2012 through July 31, 2015, in accordance with the terms of the agreement attached. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Langevin? Yes. Councilor Marcucci? Yes. Councilor McDonald? Yes. <coughs> Councilor Moriarty? Yes. Councilor Nicola? Yes. Councilor Pelequin? Yes. Councilor Regis? Yes. Councilor Vandal? Yes. Councilor Clements? Yes. Nine yes? Thank you. Agenda item number 16 is Councilor's Forum. We'll start with Councilor Langevin. I'm all set this evening, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Regis. I have nothing this evening. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Councilor Marcucci. Thank you, Madam Chair. Through you at the last uh, council meeting, I had requested uh, that we have a presentation on the process uh, for councilors and citizens on the trash violations and how that's handled and I just want to bring it up again so it's a, a reminder that yeah we, have something we actually do have some of the material I'll put it together I've been kind of waiting a little bit for the council to get themselves organized for the subcommittees but I'll, we'll put that to the uh, kind of the top of the list so when we have a uh, EHS subcommittee we'll bring the material in I appreciate that thank you very much that's Did, all. is this something you wanted in a in the council. subcommittee no, no, meeting or you want oh, it as, as part meeting. of a yes. presentation? I thought, if, just to be clear, <coughs> clear uh, I know that the council members had received a letter, I cannot remember the individual's name, but from an individual about one of the trash fine, uh, trash fees, fines, and that that was distributed to all members of the council. And my recollection was that you had brought up uh, an issue about what transpired in terms of that individual and what, what went into that. What I've done is I've actually investigated that specific complaint to find out the details regarding that, and that's what I was going to bring back. Is is that the intent? I appreciate that, Mr. Clark. Really, I do. Okay. Um, I think that was a letter that I had just received from somebody. Yes, because we did receive two. Uh, actually, uh, Madam Chair received one, too, that um, was addressed specifically to her and then also to myself as town manager. So I had both of them looked at, okay. and I'm happy to present the findings on both of those. I was just, that's, that's fine. Okay. I was just hoping at some point if we could have a representative here, just so the people, the citizens of Southbridge can understand sure. the process. That's all. Thank you. Is that, that it? Thank that's you, it? Madam Chair. Council Pelequin? Uh, yeah. I have Okay, please bear with me. Um, the first thing was pursuant to the uh, letter from the police union. I guess one of the counselors had requested some records pertaining to that. I was wondering if I could get copies of them as well once the records request was fulfilled. Yeah, through you, Madam Chair. Um, 
we have started to put that together. Mm -hmm. I'm actually glad you brought it up that uh, there are occasions in which we receive uh, requests for records. Uh, the requests for records, I believe there's over 30 people in the department and one person's training records was approximately a quarter of the size of the desk. Um, if the council so chooses, I can shut down some of the elements of the police department to put together these records requests and literally have hand trucks of material brought in. Uh, I would suggest, you know, a, a better course of action would be that if there are individual specific questions, uh, certainly I attempted to respond to some of those uh, today. And then I did go through with the chief some of the, uh, the elements. And I think that a much more constructive use of everyone's time, quite honestly, would be if individual members of the council wish to see the material that goes into that. They're more than welcome to go on a tour. I think actually Madam Chair encouraged members of the council to tour different facilities. And I'm sure the chief would be happy to take some time out of his schedule to go through and go through items in that letter and the materials. Uh, I think I did it with him and probably took a half hour, 45 minutes to, to go through the different material. But instead of having, you know, a tremendous amount of staff time consumed uh, with a request of that nature, I would much rather have people on the street and people out doing their, their jobs instead of trying to put together these, these requests. So there's no lists of, like, there's no list of vehicles owned by the police department, for example? I think we actually, some of that material, I thought we put in the package. That material is, I believe, some of that was in. If it's not, it will be in shortly. The vehicles isn't a problem. Okay. But training records for every member of the department without a specific timeline given, you know, technically, you know, I mean, that could be 100 years worth of records. And I'm, I'm not being flippant, but how do I know? So, you know, we sent the material over to the chief to start pulling, putting the materials together, but it's a lot of material. And I have a sample, you're welcome to come by the office. Uh, you know, as original documents, I would suggest people just look at them. But and if there's specific items in there, you know, I'm happy to sit down with any member of the council to go through uh, what I found and to go through what the process is for how police officers are trained. I think the chief is more than adequate to, to address any of those issues and I would encourage a discussion with the chief instead of voluminous requests that are going to bog down departments. Oh yeah, I, I, I haven't called you yet but I, it's on my to-do list, but yes. Um, but any information that you have assembled and disseminated to anybody in the council I would be interested in seeing as well. It's just that... Yeah, on the, yeah. On the vehicles and the small ones that we can right. easily accommodate, no problem. On the ones that are too voluminous, we'll... Right. Let's, um, see if we have another alternative way. Okay, great. Um, my next thing was I received in my packet a memo to the Liquor Board dated July 26th entitled Cancellation Request of Four Liquor Licenses According to MGL Chapter 138 Section 77 Cancellation of Licenses on Cessation Licenses Business. Mm -hmm. um, and this was very this is a very good memo. There's lots of information here. There's a, a two pages from, from your office. Um, there's a, a legal opinion. There's um, charts, census figures, um, four pages of color photographs. There's lots of information here. My, um, and I don't really want to go into the, the, the substantive um, discussion of what you actually wrote in the memo. My primary concern was I have a copy of the meeting agenda for the liquor board meeting last week and um, it was amended on July 23rd which was three days before the meeting and there's only three um, license holders listed on the meeting agenda even though there is a discussion of four license holders in the uh, memo that went out at the meeting and I'm kind of confused as to how that's not a violation of the open meeting law considering all four licenses were discussed at the meeting. Madam Chair, I, I believe that those was an update on the status of those licenses. Is that what the... Um, right, but um, the meeting agenda for the Liquor Board discusses um, it's item um, there's number seven on a specific license, number eight is another specific license, and number nine is yet another license, but there's four licenses discussed in the memo and there were four licenses discussed mm -hmm. at the meeting. And I mm -hmm. think that if the fourth license holder had known that they were going to be the topic of a substantive discussion about their liquor license, they would have made more of an effort to attend the meeting. 
Yeah, I, I think that through you, Madam Chair, I, I think that there's an element of confusion. <laughs> um, there was an action taken by the Liquor Board that they contemplated a review of three, of, well, actually it was originally five, but of licenses that were not in operation. Understanding that Chapter 138, Section 77 says that you shall not have licenses not in operation, <coughs> and, and we had five that in not even a strict not even a strict interpretation of the law but but the law uh, technically is not in compliance so what i alerted the the liquor board to was that an action needs to be taken they would not have necessarily had that on the agenda nor was it a formal uh, discussion at that point the purpose of the, the my showing up to that meeting was to inform them that their own self-imposed deadline was up and that now would be the appropriate time to schedule a formal hearing so that folks are entitled to due process and that the material will be sent out. And that's exactly what happened. And due process will be, will be followed. Hopefully, we can you know, meet with the individual uh, owners and see if we can get these licenses operational because really the intent is to have operational liquor licenses as opposed to pocket licenses which are strictly prohibited by law. So there's no, I mean certainly, you know, this council, members of this council have filed, you know, complaints with the, um, the public records people and, and the open meeting law people. I don't think that there was any, you know, asking them to schedule a meeting to formally hold a, a public hearing. They, they heard that suggestion and a formal notice and the agenda will be done appropriately. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. there was no action taken other than to schedule an upcoming event. So in my opinion, there, there was no violation of open meeting law to ask them to schedule a future event. I just, I think if I owned a, a business or a liquor license or, you know, anything in town and I was going to be the subjects of conversation at a meeting, I would like to think that I would be on the agenda and not. I, I don't mean to believe the point. I, okay. um, also, at the meeting, um, one of the license holders who did attend the meeting asked me about an agenda item relating to his property that was voted upon favorably at the General Government Subcommittee on March 8th of this year. And I guess it never came before the full council. And. I said I would get back to him and yeah, find the, out. Yeah, the request um, that was made, and I, I will honestly have to go back and look, um, that there was a request made, a general, submit, general government subcommittee was held for parking, for the town to make available parking. And I know there was some concerns, and I'll just have to go through the minutes to find out why that was uh, taken off. Uh, but there were some concerns that had emerged in terms of some of the, the legalities of honoring the request, and we just simply need to get the material and find out where we are to, to resurrect that. Okay, okay. Um, one last thing. Um, this is quick, I promise. One of my first things that I did um, after being elected to the council is I made a request to review the last two years of executive session meeting minutes and I had a couple of good conversations with the chair and the manager about this. I'm really excited about the prospects of um, some of these meeting minutes being released to the public, events, um, um, subjects that are no longer actively being worked on and have been settled by the council are, are open to being released by the public and I guess that Generally, this is something that municipal bodies are not great at doing, so I'm really excited to hear that Southbridge is going to be doing some of this. Um, as anybody who knows me knows, transparency is something that means a lot to me. Um, but I just wanted to make sure, because it seems like there's some sort of, um, a little bit of confusion about what I was requesting. I mean, I think it's so great that we're reviewing this information for public release, but my request was to review all of the executive session meeting minutes from the last couple of years, not just stuff that's available for public release, but all of it, and I just want to make sure that everybody was on the same page about my request. Thank you. I got such a fault. Hi. Okay. When we talked, if you recall, I said that I have to look into whether we can do all of this of the executive session subcommittee meetings, including things that have not been resolved, because I'm not sure that as not a sitting member of the council at the time, mm -hmm. you, ha you can have access to that material. I've asked the manager to look into that with our town attorney 
and see if it's if it's possible. I've also asked his um, his admin to start bringing some of the material out. We're going to have to review it. The council is going to have to look at it because the council has to vote on whether to release the material. It's usually information that's been resolved, that's allowed to, to come forward. The only thing I'm concerned about, Councillor, is whether or not we can provide to you information that has not been resolved as you were not a member of the council right. at the time it was on. So that's what we're looking into in terms of okay. that piece. I understand what you're looking for. Right. So okay. we're on the same page. Okay. 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 Um, okay. I've been advised that I, I am legally entitled to look at this, but if you want to check to make sure that uh, I, yeah, right, I, I understand that. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. That's all for me tonight. You're all done. Councilor Vander? I, I have one request. Through, through you. No, sir. This is Councilor's forum now. We, we're not, it's not a debate time. I'm sorry. This well, is strictly the council. No. 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 I'm afraid not. This is Councilor's okay. forum. I'm sorry. I, I have one request through you, Madam Chair, to the town manager. Streets and sidewalks, the vegetation growing between the sidewalks and in the gutters and stuff is it, getting out of hand. So I would like to see them, you know, take look into the matter and kind of take care of it. Thank you. That's all I have. It just, uh, I know we're doing that, and I think there was a couple uh, addresses that were given to me before, and I think the next morning, which made me look really good, they were scheduled to be done, and, and we're done. But if there are s certain areas, please let me know, and we'll, we'll do what we can do to them. Well, you know, they can take a ride around, and they can, you know, find some areas. It's not too, too hot to find them. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah. Councilor McDonald. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, first, you know, I wanted to mention that every year, I think it's fair to point out that the town clerk's office does a great job of compiling the uh, information for us in terms of the charter and the bylaws, the signed bylaws, uh, and the town council rules, and they're handed out traditionally to every councilor. And so I realized what Mr. Uh, Satilli's effort was. I think he did a great job. Thank you very much. This was very nice. The addition of the state constitution and the federal constitution is a nice addition. He did that out of his own pocket. Just want to thank him for that. Uh, I am deeply concerned. I really wasn't going to have much to say tonight other than what I just said, other than some things I just heard. I am deeply concerned, Madam Chair, and, uh, that this council is not understanding our role. And specifically, I want to point out just the Charter, Chapter 2, Section 4, 2-4-1, two that says, except as otherwise provided in this Charter, all general, corporate, legislative, policy-making, and appropriation powers of the town shall be vested in the town council. In looking at the powers and duties and role of the town manager in chapter 4, section 2, 4-2-1, two the town manager shall be the chief administrative officer of the town and shall be directly responsible and accountable to the town council for the effective administration of all town affairs placed in his or her charge by the council or by this charter. And that the manager shall serve as a resource to the council the council shall provide policy and political leadership to the town. The manager shall bring policy issues to the council to consider in making policy choices and shall then implement the policies chosen by the council. I just heard your response to Councillor Peliquin in terms of what she wanted to do to be able to effectively do her job. This is a council of nine, not five and maybe four others. This is a council of nine. And we have to be able to effectively do our job. Now, I think it's no secret because I made it mention in the newspaper when I was asked what I asked for, we had a very serious letter that was given to us. And I don't care how anybody else characterizes it. I think it's important to three specific entities on how this council proceeds forward with that letter. One being the police chief himself. Two being the union, the, or the officers out on the patrol beat. And three being the town citizens. Now I've asked for information. One of those information requests is training records, which has been characterized as occupying that table. Now I can assure you, I think we have been in the computer age in Southbridge for a good number of years. I was the training chief and I was the deputy fire chief of an organization that had 72 firefighters. I think it's incumbent to find out what the minimum requirements are, that we, whether or not we're meeting them. Those set by the standards of the Mass Training Council, Communal Justice Training Council, those that are set by general law and those that are set by recommended bodies. That's only prudent for us to do so that we're showing our due diligence, to characterize it as being voluminous and not being able to be obtained. I can get a college transcript of what I took in four years, 120 semester hours on two pieces of paper. 
And I know that if I was requested to provide training records for firefighters, even for firefighters in the state when I was the director of the Mass Training, Mass Fire Training Academy, I could provide that information and I can assure you it wouldn't take 1,500 pages like I was told. So to characterize it like that, I'm a little bit taken aback and a little bit disappointed in that. And I think we, that I made my point and illustrated there and that's about all I have to say on the subject in fairness to all those three parties that I mentioned and this council. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Council. Council Moriai. Uh, just a couple quick things, uh, more or less just, just plugging a few different things. Uh, as far as Relay for Life, there's some fundraisers coming up. Uh, one is a wiffle ball tournament this weekend at Henry Street. Uh, those who are interested, let me know. Gary McKinstry, who some may know, a local out of Dudley, local medium psychic, is going to do a, uh, a show with us in early September as well. Uh, and then also, uh, before tonight's meeting, uh, I had a, an informal meeting with a few different folks uh, regarding uh, some frustration that uh, a resident had in terms with uh, her daughter's experience at the, the middle school in terms of uh, athletics and uh, the lack of a, a softball program in town. Uh, so we're trying, you know, more or less, I guess, uh, for those who are interested as far as helping out uh, or playing, uh, from, from the gentleman from ASA, it sounded as if uh, they would take kids up to 18. Uh, Walter Bird was at the meeting. In the you okay. Um, so up to, eight, yeah, 8 to 18. Um, so any girls interested in fast pitch, uh, contact myself or I guess Walter or, or whatever. We have a few different people that uh, were interested in, in setting something up, and I figured I'd use this venue to uh, help promote that. Uh, and, and provide that outlet for those uh, those kids. Uh, and at this moment, uh, I'll leave it at that. Okay. Councilor Clements. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, on a monthly note here, we've got uh, town cleanup going on. Usually, Monique Nana would come up and make a comment, but she's unavailable this evening. So I'm going to mention that on this Saturday, August 4th, there is a uh, town cleanup effort going on. You can meet at 9 a.m. at the Wells parking lot if you would like to join in uh, making your town a better place and setting a good example for those who reside here. Perhaps we'll teach those others who, uh, who choose to litter a thing or two and, and uh, do some good works as, we're, as we do this every month. Um, you can bring your own gloves. We do provide some rubber gloves. We also provide trash bags. And we just spend a couple of hours or so um, going over the main areas of the town. We also um, have water for you and usually a snack. So if you would like to join in, please uh, meet up at 9 a.m. at Wells parking lot, uh, the Wells School, middle school parking lot on Marcy Street. And uh, we will do our best to, um, to make the town look better. That also, uh, obviously, if it's a rainy, poury day, usually if it's sprinkling, we still do our job. But if uh, not, then you know, we might cancel due to very inclement weather. Otherwise, we try to do our best. Um, I also just want to mention, I, I know you, you were very generous in your, in your thanks earlier, um, uh, Madam Chair, but I want to recognize um, just a, a few people who helped out. You know, the community center is something that's really great here in this town, and a number of years ago it was brought, the, the issue of the windows came up in terms of uh, energy efficiency and all that good stuff. And then there were some actual, um, even more issues that came up as we looked into this. And I want to um, thank uh, our Chief Dan Charette, who brought this to our attention when we were working on getting the floor done a number of years ago. And it just kind of sat there for a while. And then last year, we had a lot of events happen that that community center was used um, quite a bit. It was used for a tornado. It was used for a hurricane. And then it was used for a snowstorm. And after that, seeing how many people were, besides the fact that it is our senior center now, having been replaced with the registry of motor vehicles in the center of town, um, and, and the Las Americas folks use it, and not to mention everybody else. So the, the importance of getting enhancing that building energy efficient wise to save taxpayers monies on the heating costs and and then the health issues in terms of um, there was you know a little mold on those windows and a few other concerns that came to our attention in the process and uh, it just made sense that we should try to do something so a number of uh, businesses came together and uh, committed to this town and provided for this town um, and for those who use that building pretty much 24 hours a day, according to Mike Trombley. So I, I want to thank uh, the generosity of the people out there who did commit um, financially and physically 
uh, especially physically. Uh, we had Ed Trainer, who's helped us for the past few years on lights for our Christmas tree. Well, he was out there also boarding up those windows every evening because we actually had to do some of the work ourselves to keep the price down. And I want to thank the chief who came out a couple of nights and also helped us with that project. Um, my family, I hate to put you guys on the spot, but my husband, my son-in-law, Clark, and, um, and, uh, and my father, who also showed up and screwed in the plywood um, so that the, the building was secure in the evening and, and Menard Glass who did the project for us could come in and put those windows in the morning. Um, everybody just pulled together, especially also um, Mike Trombley who put up with that one week of chaos um, and Jose, the new, the new maintenance and I'm not sure his exact title, uh, but I would be, uh, it would be wrong to overlook him because he came in early to provide uh, early entrance for the workers and he sometimes stayed late. Uh, when they wanted to get the job done, it was a hot week. So I thank all those people who came together and really um, did a great job. This was at no cost to the town. I would say that, well, with the exception of the DPW taking window sills off and putting blinds back, that was really the only cost to the town. So again, kudos to those who um, funded this project and worked on it. Um, small portion for me, big kudos to those who really pulled it together and made it happen. Um, and so take a look at them. It's a, it's a wonderful addition to our community and, and it uh, not only enhances it aesthetically but obviously efficiently and, and it's a good asset for the community to use uh, for many years to come. So thanks to everybody who put up with that process while it was going on. Um, that's it. Thanks. 9 a.m. Uh, if you're looking to join us to pick up trash, 9 a.m. Saturday morning. Of course, if you can't make 9, show up somewhere along 10 and pick up a bag from somebody on the street. We usually do Maine, both sides, Hamilton, Center, uh, Central. We do as much as we can with the bodies we have, sometimes a few, sometimes many. So we encourage you to come out. Bring your kids. It's a good, uh, good lesson for them to learn. Thank you. Thank you, Counselor. Um, agenda item number 17 is the discussion of our next meeting date. Looking Monday, August 13th, 7 p.m., again here in the Piapi room at this point, unless anything changes, okay. we will be here. All right, and agenda uh, number 18 is adjournment. So All in favor? Meeting's adjourned. Thank you.